Well, after many season setups, the show finally gives it the scene we have all been waiting for in one of the best episodes yet that truly changes up the formula in the best way possible. Hey guys, here remember Bates Motel, Season 5, Episode 6, Marion, and holy shit, what an episode. I mean, there's already so much to talk about. Obviously, I was definitely looking forward to this episode because of the way the last episode left off. It looked like right where we left off, that was going to be Psycho. Like, this was going to be the story of Psycho, and we were finally going to get to see all of that play out. I mean, that's why we've watched this show, right? It was for that prequel, and to see Norman, you know, get into that version of Norman Bates. However, as we know, this Norman Bates has been quite different from the Norman Bates we saw in that film. You know, we've had more time with this one, we've seen more of what he's gone through... In the film, we didn't really get to see that as much. This, this show's dive a lot more deeper into his consciousness and things like that. And this episode, holy shit did it deliver. I mean, not only did it deliver, but I think it's one of the best episodes the show has done. By far best episode of the season. I mean, not no question about it. This was obviously, absolutely the best episode of the season. So many great reveals, so many fantastic scenes this episode, and take back anything I said about Rihanna. I was worried about Rihanna going into this, but she really impressed me here. I really love what she had to do in this episode, and especially the ending. I mean, the ending in general really did impress me with the way things turned out here, but let's just get into this episode because there is definitely a lot to talk about. Like I said, a lot did go down in this one, which is understandable because we've been waiting for this episode for so long, but let's just get into it. So we start off, and right off the bat, we see Marion Crane. She arrives at the motel, and Norman comes down to the office where she asks for a room, but only wants to pay by cash instead of giving her name and ID. But she does sign the registry book as Marion Samuels. Now, this is probably because she's involved with, you know, some very shady embezzlement stuff, and she's trying to cover up her name as best as possible. But she's saying she's coming from L.A., meeting her boyfriend, and we she texts Sam as he gives her the key to room one. She checks out the room, especially the shower in the bathroom, and he introduces himself. She asks for something to eat. He offers her to make a ham sandwich. She accepts, and he walks up the stairs in the heavy rain and sees his mother, uh, and sees mother waiting, watching him from one of the windows. So mother is still out there, but he's obviously not in good terms with her. You know, he knows that mother's been up to a lot. He knows a lot of the, that mother has done without him, and like I said, he really does not want to see her right now. But he enters the house, and when mother questions where he has been, he defies her and ignores her questions. So he really does not want to interact with her right now. You know, she's really fucked with his mind and he just wants to be, you know, somewhat sane. So he says he isn't playing a game with her and miss that he is insane. I like that he's admitting that, that he's crazy. I mean, because he is and he can't remember who, when he cleaned up. He says many people who are mad can fully function, including heads of state. So he must, so he could, must definitely run a hotel. He can definitely do it by himself. And she says he's upset that she went out the other night and got laid, but he is to blame since he's always out out with Madeline, and she says that she's glad he found out, because maybe it's time for no secrets between them, and he says the only secret is that she doesn't really exist. He made her up and tells her to get out of his way, and she asks if she doesn't exist, why is she there, and he says because the girl who has checked in the motel is attractive, he's beginning to understand it all. He leaves with a tray of food, tells her that she isn't real, and has no power over him, and he's going to prove it. So this episode, you can tell he's ready to put that part of him, you know, um, aside. He's just ready to put that behind him. He doesn't want to have that mother personality anymore. He wants to be Norman Bates, and for a lot of this episode, that is exactly what he's doing. He acts very normal, unlike the original movie, which is something this show did very well. It really helped it stand out more. You can tell that Norman is trying to be more of his normal self, and he's a lot more caring towards Marion, and that was definitely one of the most riveting parts of this episode, is watching Norman a crack. You know it's going to happen, and you're watching with, you know, riveting uh, devastation, and when it does happen, is very well done, but the way they set all this up, I think, really did help for the payoff in the end. So, Emma's then at her home, reading all the articles about Norma's death. When Dylan comes home, she wipes her tears away, but he notices that something's wrong. He knows, obviously, there's definitely something that she's hiding, and he, she tells him that she decided to look up the motel and found an article about Norma. His mom committed suicide two years ago, right after they left, and Dylan reads the article and begins to cry while Emma attempts to comfort him, and just Dylan's reaction, I mean, a lot of people say Max Theriot isn't a good actor, but he really did a great job there. I mean, it was a very visceral reaction. You could tell 
tell that, again, Dylan's really been the character that's been the most in the dark about everything. He had no idea what Norm has been up to. He had no idea what they've been doing together, and I love that. I love that he's learning all this stuff now. He's putting all this stuff together. Um, and it's devastating, really. I mean, he's had two years, and all this time he thought Norm was alive, when in reality she's been dead for two years, and it's really sad to think about. But we see Mary, and she's enjoying her sandwich, and she says the room is so retro. He admits he's not a hunter, but a taxidermist, and she says that he has a big house up there. He says he doesn't have a wife or family, but he has his mother, and she scoffs about him living with his mother. He admits there's a lot of ups and downs, but more downs than ups lately, and... The interactions between these two, it's a lot less eerie than the film. It feels a lot more natural because, as we see in the show, Marion's a bit of a tortured soul. I mean, she's going through a lot of the same things that Norman is, and I really like the way this episode categorized on that, but Marion says he's lucky to have a mother since hers died when she was five, and she ran away at 15, being alone ever since, and he asks how she ended up in L.A., and she said that there were a lot of chapters, and he gently strokes one of the birds on the table, telling her it's hard to be lonely, but it's also hard to love people, and that is taken directly from the film, that whole him stroking the bird, things like that, and he thinks that the little private trap everyone lives in, once you care about someone, it rules you, and who even knows if at the end of the day, that person is really who you think they are, or if they are really real at all, of course, in regards to the mother persona, which obviously he's learned isn't really actually there, so... I thought the way they set all that up was quite well, and like I said, the bonding between these two is definitely very apparent, but her phone vibrates and it's Sam, who claims he's still busy with a client. She tells him it doesn't matter. In reality, he's probably talking to Madeline and trying to confess what's going on, but she tells him to forget his client, come to room one. He says he's sorry and cannot leave right now. Madeline starts pounding on his door, screaming at him, and when Marion asks him who that is, he hangs up. He comes out of the bathroom, telling his wife that he was just going to the bathroom, and, you know, she's obviously very suspicious. She knows that definitely he's involved with an affair. She's just waiting for him to confess, and I don't know why he's not telling her. I mean, obviously, you know, she's on you. Just tell her the truth already. It would make sense for him to do that, but Norman watches everything through the picture on the wall, including when Marion addresses Take a Shower, which that is taken directly from Psycho, and they honestly did a very good job at keeping it shot for shot, but not making it so we compare it with the original. Yes, there are going to be a lot of, I think, side-by-side -side videos there, but there's a lot more going on here. I think in the original, it's very creepy and eerie that Norman is doing this, but we've seen him do this in the show before, so it's not nearly as creepy, and... You know, basically, he pulls away from the hole in the wall when he hears his mother say she's with him and to not forget, and this is why he needs her for things like this, because he does have this problem with women where he's, you know, obsessed with them and he likes to stare at them, and this is kind of why she, he needs her. So again, he doesn't really believe it. He thinks that there isn't really much of a reason to believe her, and we then get one of the most ingenious things this show has ever done. Because we see Mary and she gets in the shower, you know, grabs a bar of soap from the sink, and it pretty much is shot for shot the way the original scene was. It's very eerie, you know, you see the same type of shots and things like that, only it's in color. But instead, she doesn't, there's no one at the door. She actually hears the door close, and she ignores it. So yeah, she goes away from the shower because she thinks it's just weird, and she wants to get away from it, and she doesn't like it. So I thought that was really cool the way the show did that. You know, it was a lot less predictable by them doing that, because I thought, okay, this is definitely going to be the shower scene she's about to get killed. But when you really think about it, is there really much of a reason for Norman to kill her? No, at this point, there's not much of a reason for him to do that. She hasn't given him a reason to, there's no reason why he needs to kill her, and it made sense why it didn't happen. So, she comes back to the office, asks to see the desk registry, saying she wants to know if Sam is on the registry from the last time that they were there. And she wants his actual home address, but Norman says that it's not on the registry, but he can't give her the address because he knows Sam's wife. Now, we know, obviously, when Sam came the last time, he didn't call himself Sam, he call himself like John 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 Johnson or something like that but Marion says he doesn't have a wife as she denies it and Norman says he doesn't like the way that Sam is treating either woman he writes down the address for her she points at him saying she knows he's wrong and leaves in her car and I thought all this was set up quite well you know Norman's detest for Sam how he treats these women like shit and he won't just tell them the truth and Marion drives the address that Norman gave her he witnesses Sam and Madeline she witnesses Sam and Madeline arguing the house and she begins to cry and again Rihanna 
Tanya did a very good job in this scene. You could tell that she really felt what she had with Sam was real, and now she's realizing she basically was just playing second fiddle all along, and that he really was only with her for satisfaction reasons, and she's crushed about it, and realizing she was wrong about him this whole time, she gets out of the car, grabs her crowbar, smashes the windows of the expensive car, and at that point, I really thought that she was just ready to kill him. Like, you, you could really tell that she is obviously enraged, and he comes out, turns off the alarm, asking her what she's doing. She drives off and returns to the house. He tells his wife that he can explain. She throws her wine in his face and locks him out. Again, if you would have just come clean, bro, none of this would have happened, but Sam's kind of an idiot, so it doesn't surprise me that he didn't just tell her. I mean, he, he really is not that smart. You know, really the smart thing would have been to tell your wife what's going on, but he decided not to do that, so... Back at the Bates house, we see Dylan's calling Demain to know what's going on and why he didn't tell him about their mother's death. And this phone conversation is both really devastating, but also very satisfying. Because the first time these two have talked in two years, and Norman says he kept it from him because it was too painful. He shut down, he couldn't bring himself to tell him about her suicide. So again, he's sticking with the story that it's a suicide, but of course he knows the actual truth. Dylan says that that is bullshit and she would never do that. So Dylan knows definitely that it's not suicide. That's not something Norma would do. She's not that weak. She's a lot stronger than that. And he knows his mother. And I like seeing that. I mean, we were introduced, again, we were introduced to Dylan and it seemed like he really did not want anything to do with Norma. But through the show, he's really learned how his mother is and how strong she is. And one of the things he knows is that Norma would not kill Norman without taking him with her. I think, honestly, if Norma were to kill herself, she would have killed Norman along with her because the one thing she couldn't lose was Norman even though she was so terrified of Norman and couldn't bear the idea of living and almost you know couldn't live with him she had to get Norman she needed Norman in her life and if it meant killing Romero I honestly think she would have because that's how much she cared about her son and Norman says she had a darkness in her Dylan never knew about and she attempted to kill him along with her which yeah I mean she did she want remember in that scene she was trying to kill Norman that was the idea she wanted to kill him and confirmed by the authorities Norman says it was a horrible tragedy it should never happen but it did there is nothing more to say he thanks him for calling and hangs up on Dylan so again he doesn't want him to know the actual details it's more devastating that way and it definitely makes Makes things a lot more intense. It makes me a lot more interested in seeing what's going to happen once Dylan eventually comes to the motel and how the confrontation is actually going to take place. So Norman then comes in the room, tells Norman to come and eat. He comes to the kitchen. She asks him to set the table. Instead, he opens the fridge and tells her he's making his own dinner. So she says that he's confused. She needs to take care of him. He says for the first time, he's actually seeing clearly. He doesn't need her to help him with anything. And she and Mother pleads them to look at her. She grabs his face, but he closes his eyes, but he gives in before he can completely pry his eyes open. And she wants to know why he's being mean to her. He says he made her up, and he isn't even sure Dylan just called him either. He, every time he says he made her up, she throws all the dishes and food on the table, and she finally gets him to admit that she's real, and that scene, Vera Farmiga just killed it in that scene where she's, you know, slamming all this food, saying, is this real, is this real, because yeah, all the food's real, she's just not physically there, and she hugs him, saying that she's there to take care of him, not hurt him, he then asks, why does he feel so horrible about it, and he returns to the motel, sees Marion's car, he can hear a lot of noise coming from her room, he knocks and comes in to see her, and he learns that she went to his house, and she feels like an idiot, and this scene was just incredible. I love the way this was done. Like I said, the way they get us to relate to these two and see how similar they are was honestly genius. And she tells him not to be nice to her right now. She doesn't want to cry. She informs him that she's checking out, but she can't return home because of something she has done. She says, at least, you know, obviously, that having to do with the money. If she returns home, she's probably going to be arrested. And she says at least he told her the truth, but it is just such a shock. It feels like the beautiful, kind man she thought he was just died tonight. It's She's gone completely and she doesn't know what to do because part of her doesn't want to leave hoping that he will come to her explain it all that he had left her and she begins to cry leans on Norman's shoulder for comfort he says she doesn't want to be that person he saw the money shoves her towards the door and again it's it's very sad to see, you know, you can really tell that she genuinely loves Sam, and she really thought that he loved her, but in reality, she's just realizing that she was basically just, you know, someone there to fuck, and some for him to satisfy, not really someone that he actually loved, and she's obviously very hurt by it, and again, I think Rihanna did a pretty good job here. Was it the best acting ever? No. But for someone who I thought was going to be really, really bad, she's really impressed me. I thought for what she had to do in this episode, she handled quite well. And like I said, she really did give it her all here. So 
She doesn't, basically, she says the prospect of that is scary. He says what's scary is being caught in that trap. He gives her advice on her, on her car and phone so no one can trace her. She doesn't even want her clothes, and he begs for her to go. And she hugs him, tells her to get out of there while she can, and she does. So, yeah, Marion got away, surprisingly, which I was quite surprised, but I'm like, all right, now is she getting hit by a car? What's going to happen there? But, yeah, she actually got away. But honestly, it makes sense why she did get away. Because again, there's no reason for Norman to kill her at this point. If anything, he should feel bad for her because she's essentially very similar to what he's done. A lot of the things that he's done where he's just wanted to be with someone that's real and something that's an actual relationship, he can't have. He can't have that regular relationship. And if we know one thing, we know he hates adultery. A lot of the killings he's done has been because of adultery, such as Mrs. Watson or even his father. I mean, a lot of it has been because of adultery, and this is definitely one of those things. He hates the idea of adultery. He wants to rid the world of it, and you can really see how this gets to him, but he's not intent on killing Marion, and that's really the genius here, that Marion actually did get away. I love that the show did that. It really helps it stand on its own. He orders her to stop at his car lights flash by the office, and uh, we see basically Mother's quite upset about this. You know, she's really upset that he let Marion get away because she was supposed trying to get him to sleep with her but this whole thing between these two I thought was really well done they gave us more character development than we thought they would she actually was not creeped out by him surprisingly basically because she was like I said just as tortured as him from what happened she was really the person that she needed that night and I think that was a really cool thing they add to this to the show that really did deepen the character as a whole and made us care a lot more for her than I think we did in, even in the original film so in the office, Norman is then gluing the lamp that Marion broke, and Mother's upset that he let Marion get away because she supposedly was just trying to get him to sleep with her, and he wanted her, he orders her to stop it. Car lights flash by the office, and Mother says that she's back. So Norman goes to the window, and he sees that Sam has finally arrived, and Mother says that he reminds her of... Norman's father, and that's what he looks like. He looks like Norman's father, a self-centered asshole, and Norman says he's glad she got away. Sam goes in the room. He's calling out for Marion. He phones her. She doesn't answer, and he apologizes, explaining the hell that he has been living with this lie since he met her, but it's just too late. She already got away. He can do whatever he wants, but remember, that part of her is gone. You know, she doesn't want anything to do with him, and he promises to be at the motel room waiting for her to come back, and Norman shares that his mother shielded him from all the pain she endured from his father, and I love that for the first time, Mother is speaking to him as she, if she's not normal. Like, she is simply a figment of his imagination, which we have yet to see. Finally, she's breaking that facade, and Norman learns that she always did this to keep him safe, and she says the pain she kept from him, he now needs to feel it. And she says if he really wants to know, then pain comes with the knowledge. She tells him that they were partners. She reveals that he wanted to save her, but he was too small, and Norman wants to know what she is and what she went through. Now he's going to feel all of it. She says the only way to stop this feeling is to do what she always did and what he wants to do to the asshole Sam Loomis right now. She says Sam is a bad man. Man like his father, hurting innocent women like his mother, using them like tracks. She, he, she tells him that he isn't too little now, and he walks out of the office into room one, and Sam, we see, is in the shower, and he hears something, believes it's Marion, he opens the bathroom door, and then we get the shower scene, where he yanks the curtain open, repeatedly stabs Sam in the shower, Sam grabs the shower curtain, Falls halfway out the tub dead. Norman says, oh, mother, what have I done? And Sam's dead. Sam is actually the one that was killed in the bathroom. And that is the way this episode ends. Really incredible stuff overall. But let's just get this episode and where we're going to go for the rest of the show. So, holy shit, I mean, what an unpredictable episode this really was. Not just the ending, but in general, this was not at all the way I wanted, I was thinking this would go. And I'm honestly really happy about it. That's what's the most surprising thing, is that I'm happy with the way this turned out. If you were to tell me that this would have ended with Marion Crane getting away, and Sam Loomis being killed, who in the original movie we don't give a shit about, I would have been, I would have looked at you like I was crazy. There's no way I could have possibly been happy with that outcome, but that is exactly the case. I think this was exactly the right move for the show, because as I said, Marion Crane is a character, she was great. I thought Rihanna genuinely did do a very good job, and they did a really good job of developing that character, but even though they did develop her character, that does not mean they need to make Marion Crane be killed in the shower, because like I said, this Norman's very different. He doesn't just kill to kill. That's something that this Norman does not have. The original movie, Norman just killed because he needed to kill, and that mother didn't want to see him sleep with someone. This was a different situation, though. Marion Crane 
was very much like Norman in the sense where she was a tortured soul and where she couldn't have that normal life and that no matter what she did, you know, she couldn't run away from the law. And there was a lot of stuff that's very similar to Norman, you know, where she's had a lot of crossroads in her life and she hasn't really had much of a semblance of one. And Sam was her one chance to finally have that idea of a normal life and finally have someone who cared about her and who could she could rely on and maybe have a genuine relationship with. And realizing that he actually was this terrible person that he actually did all these awful things that obviously ruined it all for her and I love the fact that she wanted nothing to do with him I think it just added so much to the character I think they did a very good job in crafting that and really gave a lot of good reason why Norman should not have killed her and I'm glad that they didn't make him kill her because there really was no reason for Marion Crane to be killed as much as I thought that it would have been cool to see the shower scene is one of the most famous scenes in movie history, and if they were to kill Marion, immediately you would compare it to the original film. So this was very smart to do something similar to the original film, but not do exactly the same thing. It makes a lot more sense to kill Sam Loomis because that's been one of the main storylines of the entire show, is the idea of adultery, how it's one of the worst acts someone could ever commit, and how Norman wants to put a stop to it, and how Mother, that was her goal, was to kill someone who was... Um, evil and who did do something terrible and, you know, should be paid for. You know, Marion didn't really do anything wrong except for the embezzlement, which Norman didn't really even know about. That was just something that she told him that she was involved with. You know, he didn't even know about the embezzlement, so there wasn't really a reason to kill her. Sam Loomis, on the other hand, he had every reason to kill, and it makes a lot more sense why Madeline has played such a big role in the story. Madeline has just played a big role in the story because Norman needed someone to talk to because, you know, Emma and Bradley aren't around anymore. Um, but also because now we have a case. Now we know how this is really going to play out. In the original Psycho, if you guys know, Marion had a sister, and Marion had someone who came, who, you know, found her and started investigating everything. There's no sister in this show. There's no sister, so there's no re way Marion would have been killed. Who would, you know, Madeline wouldn't have given a shit about her. She would have been like, oh, great, the mistress is dead. I, you know, I, she wouldn't have cared, really. She probably would have just been happier because she could have found ways to blame Sam for it or things like that. You know, she would not have cared if Marion had died. Sam dying, on the other hand, is a completely different scenario, and I think this is really going to change how things are between Madeline and Norman. I like that Madeline wasn't the one killed in the shower. It was actually a man that was killed, and just shows how different things were, like how different they were willing to do things, that they actually want someone to die for a reason that should be killed and that should pay for for their crime, because, yeah, I mean, I think Sam had every right to be killed for what he did. Uh, was he the best character? No, but he was a character you were supposed to hate. They did a very good job with that, and I love what they did with his character as a whole. I thought it was very bold the way they did that, and I can't wait to see where that's going to go, but I've said it a million times. Madeline, if she was in danger yet, she is definitely in danger now, because now she's going to get herself involved in something that she never really wanted to get involved in. You know, now her husband's going to be dead. Who knows really where that's going to go go is Madeline gonna care I mean I would assume she would definitely Sam meant a lot to her even though she was so pissed at him he still meant a lot to her and how's her reaction gonna be if she finds out the norm is the one behind it we'll have to see where that's gonna go and now Sheriff Green you know she's already on to Norman this is gonna be one more death for her to pin on him and we'll have to see where that goes too because I don't know exactly how things are gonna work for Sheriff Green but like I said she's already suspicious of what Norman's been up to so we'll have to see really where that's gonna go um, but besides all of that, which was incredibly well done, I think that definitely was some of the strongest stuff in the episode. Some of the strongest scenes we have between Marion and Norman, just so much, so much great relying on each other. I really did love that. I love the way the show is playing with the mother aspect of the show because finally we're seeing it as not Norma. Yes, Vera Farmiga physically is playing the role. Um, but finally she's starting to act like another personality. She's not acting like Norma because she's dropping that facade. Norman's getting an idea that his mother's not really there and that she's actually dead. He's always known that, but he said that to comfort himself. And now he's like, you know, wake the fuck up. This isn't actually my mother. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. The problem is this personality has been around for so long and has tried to shield him from what's going on that he just can't get away from it. So there's too much history between that personality that even if he tried to get away, things would not end well for Norman. And I think definitely that's one of the most problematic situations here, that he just can't get away from this uh, personality, even though he wants to, and it's it's really tragic to see that, because you do want Norman to break free. You do want him to get away from that personality, and the fact that he can't, that's what's more tragic about it, is the fact that he can't break away um, 
from this persona, and he can't find a way to get away, you know, to uh, to break hold and try to break free and everything. He just, he can't do that. So we'll have to see really where that's going to go. I think that definitely is going to be very interesting. Uh, but now Dylan. Dylan now also knows uh, what's going down. Now now he knows that definitely Norman is responsible. He knows that there's a lot that Norman is hiding. I think that definitely is going to lead Dylan and Emma to get to the Bates Motel. One of them's going to die, definitely. I don't think that both of them are going to die. I think one will die. I'm predicting now I think Dylan's going to die, and I think Emma's going to survive. I think that's probably how it's going to go. But again, I don't really know. We'll have to see what happens there. No Romero in this episode, and I'm actually okay with it, because I don't think he would have fit in this episode. There was already a lot going on, as is, and the main story was so interesting. We didn't need uh, Romero. I think he would have just made the episode clunky. I don't think he really needs to be in there, and I think it makes sense to have him on for the last four episodes of the show. Guys, there's only four episodes left, which is insane. I can't believe we're at the end of the show, but that's where we are, and it seems to me that they are going to go beyond uh, the Psycho story, because... Of course, this was the shower scene, but there's not much more story to tell with that. So I do think they are going to go beyond and show what happens after Norman gets to prison and things like that. If that's even where we're going, which at this point... I don't think we're going that route. I think we're going a completely different direction. I'm happy the show's doing that. It breaks away from, you know, comparisons, but also predictions. It makes the show a lot more unpredictable, and it makes it stand out as its own thing. Bates Motel in the beginning, I remember people were like, oh, that's never going to work as a psycho prequel. But over seasons past, it's really established itself as its own thing. And this is the thing that definitely confirms it is its own show. And I'm very happy to see they did that. This is one of the strongest, most ambitious entries in the entire show. I think it was very bold what they did it's one of the uh most interesting things the show has done i think it definitely is quite divisive i thought it was going to be but it seems that most people like it because they don't want predictability they want originality and this really was something original and genius and i'm glad the show writers really did come up with this you know they did a really great job of setting up that arc of adultery and it really did come through in the end and i am definitely in bates motel season 5 episode 6 marion a 4.75 out of 5 or an a so for guys, me this episode, Bates Motel, the most guys thought this episode overall, left your thoughts, and it absolutely loved everything about this episode. I think this is one of the best episodes, like I said, the entire series. Uh, definitely the episode to beat for this season. This season so far, it's really starting to rival season four. Season four, I do still think, is the stronger one. But after these two amazing episodes, I really could see this season ending up being the best one. We'll really have to see where we're going to go from here. But that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for The Flash, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.